I'm going to show you how to make specific object containers. On the previous page, there are directions that is a direct link to a Word document. If you click on specific, specific object, the icon that says Word document, you will the Word document will open up and you'll have the directions. You should also have the directions right in front of you. But I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the tutorial. So what I've done is I have created four containers. These are my boxes, the containers and four containees. My images down here are my containees. Now a key when you're creating containers, you need to make sure that your container is larger than your containee. So for example, my hat. If I take my hat, I know that my hat is smaller than my container. That's really important. Before I do anything in the browsers, I'm going to go ahead and lock my containers. I need to make sure they're locked. So I'm going to go ahead and lock all of them. And I'm going to lock them separately. I'm not going to group them because if I group them, then that means they would all be one container together, and we don't want that. We want them to be separate containers. Okay, we've locked them. I'm not going to lock the containees because if I locked the containees, they wouldn't be able to move. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser. I'm going to go to View, Browser, and I'm going to go ahead and go to my Object Browser, which is already clicked. Now I need to make sure that my containees, which are my images, are above my containers in the object browser because what happens when I move my container containees to my containers it slides underneath so I want to go ahead and move my images or my containees above my shapes which are my containers so I can do that right within my object browser so now my containees are on top of my container. And if you notice that your containee is larger than your container, this is a good time to go ahead and resize your containees to make them fit and have a little bit of space inside the container because that's really important. Okay, now we can go ahead and work, we can set our properties for our container. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my property browser. And notice whenever I have nothing clicked on, I have no marquee handles, I've not selected any object, that I only have four options, identification, page, tools, and grid. You do not see container. In order to see container, I have to click on the container or the containee. We are going to start with the containers. So I clicked on it. And at the very top, you have identification. If you scroll down, you'll have containers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on can contain. And if I click on can contain, should say specific object. Well, that's what I want. So we'll go, I'll show you what the options look like in the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click can contain object. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click the different, I'm going to find where which object I want. Now this is the key because I've labeled this key. So I want to find the picture of the key. And I'm going to click OK. Okay. So I'm done now with my blue box or the key box. Now I'm going to click on fan the fan box okay, and go back to my container, click on the box and I get specific object and then I'm going to click on the can contain object. I'm going to click on the little dots, the box with the dots and I'm going to find my fan. And there's my fan. I'm going to do the same for the hat. I'm going to click on hat. And I'm going to click specific object. Contain object. I'm going to click in the box. And I'm going to find the hat. And there's the hat. And then I'm going to do the same for dog. Again, specific object. And I want to find my dog. There he is. Okay. Now, you need to be save, save in frequently, so I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, I've now I've set the properties for my containers. Now it's time to move to the containees. All we need to do for the containees is click on the containee, go to container, and click true. It says return if not contained. If I did not click true, then that would mean if I that would mean if I took with the hat and I put it in the fan box, then it would be accepted into the fan container. I don't want it to be accepted. I want it to bounce out. 
So I'm going to do the same for key, through, and the same for dog, true. And the same for fan, true. I mean, I need to make sure that was true. Nope. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save again. Now, containers won't work when you're in design mode. Notice I'm in design mode or red mode. In order for my containers to work, I need to be in design or presentation mode, which is blue mode. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to save again because I want to save in presentation mode. And I'm going to test it out. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm making containers, I always make sure that it's going to bounce out of the wrong container. I'll take it up to fan and it bounces out. I'm going to take it up to key and it bounces out. And I'll take it out to dog and it bounces out. Take it up to hat and it should stick and it's stuck. So let's try that with key. It bounces out. Fan bounces out. Key. It should stick. And then let's try the same for dog. It bounces out. Good. Sticks and should stick. So it's worked. Now, in order to get my containees out of the containers, I'm not going to drag them out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click reset the page. What I'm going to do is when I click reset the page, it's going to bring it back to its original way it was saved the last time. Now remember, I saved it as soon as I clicked presentation mode and I'd set the containers. So it should go back to the original way. And there it is. So that is how you create a specific object container. Now why don't you give it a shot? I'll be around, I'll be wandering around the room, stop me if you need some help.